use something where I have these two different uh, two different uh, you know materials, each have a different band gap. And now I have this uh, uh, this hetero structure. I have this uh, difference uh, in the in the band energies over here, right? So if an electron and hole pair or this exciton it comes close to this interface or it diffuses right at this interface then it will see this large valley right it will see this electron would love to go down the hill so it essentially of it can make jump into this acceptor material similarly this donor the hole it is free to go in the other direction so if i can get the uh, this exciton close to this interface between these two materials then they'll see this large step, right? Or they'll see equivalent, you can think of this at this large electric field which exists at this interface, right? This almost a discontinuous, so your bands are discontinuous. So if you think of the derivative of that, that gives you your electric field, right? So you have this delta electric field or this very high electric field which exists at the interface of these two materials which have different band gap, right? So it will immediately split them over so the holes will now go into the acceptor material and the, the sorry the electron will go into this acceptor material so this donor material has donated this electron into this uh, acceptor material and it will get collected in the acceptor side and the hole will get collected on the donor side okay so this is the crux of how uh, this uh, organic photovoltaics works okay now let me ask you a question so what do you think should be the optimum optimum band uh, band gap as well as optimum band alignment for this uh, organic photovoltaics so what should be the optimum band gap for uh, for this photovoltaic uh, thing to occur um, for the maximum efficiency and how should the band alignment should, should be should it be should this difference be very large should it be small what do you guys think So should I have something like, like this, or should I have something like this? Uh, let's consider the easy part. What what should be the band gap? What's the band gap for optimum efficiency of a solar cell? 1.4 is right so somewhere between your yeah, 1.3 or to give a broad range 1.1 you know, to 1.4 okay now how about the band lineup should it be like like this or should it be like this and I had discussed the same thing with us we had I posted another question during the class when we were talking about this Heterojunction cell made of these two different uh, two different materials, which had this the, the misalignment uh, in the band as well. Okay, so we'll talk about how to make it more often. Right. Uh, so you're saying this one, right? So what happens if it's larger? Is that helping me uh, in gaining more energy or am I losing energy over there? What do you guys think? Am I, when I'm, essentially this electron is going from here to here, right? It's losing energy, right? Or is it gaining energy? Yeah, so I can think of uh, essentially uh, the open circuit voltage, so especially if I have, you know, these two things. I can think of the open circuit voltage as essentially the difference between the conduction band of this and the valence band of this, right? So this is the maximum energy I can extract because this much amount of energy would be lost when this transition happens, right? When the electron goes away this way. Versus if I compare it to this cell, so this is my maximum VOC I can generate. Right? So I, if I have more of this misalignment, it I lose on my VOC. 
at the same time if I have very less of it right if I have very very less of it let's say you know it's almost like no misalignment then is this the separation into exciton and the separation which will happen could be reversible where it goes here and then comes back here right or maybe it forms the exciton again so I want enough such that I can separate them and keep them separated but if I supply more what I'm doing is essentially just losing my VOC because I'm losing that extra energy in the form of uh, the thermalization when uh, which occurs when that electron jumps down the hill okay is that clear so ideally I want uh, as you guys have said that I want a band gap of uh, between 1.1 to 1.4 and I want to keep this uh, keep this uh, misalignment or this mismatch in the conduction level to be uh, to be decent but not very high in fact I want to minimize the amount of this misalignment okay so now let's look at what what happens in most of the most of the materials that uh, people use for making these cells okay so these are the two most uh, common uh, most common material use the donor is a P3HT and it's an organic compound with a stick diagram like this don't ask me what you know name the uh, chemical uh, composition of this it's, it's beyond me but it, it's just let's just call it P3HT and the uh, and the acceptor material is what's called as PCDN right so now let's look at the let's look at the band gap so the band gap of these if I subtract this conduction band from the valence band is around 1.7 right. similarly over here it's close to 3 and 5 approximately 1.9 uh, over here so this is much larger than what you guys had suggested right and look at this misalignment right this is uh, 4.2 minus uh, 3.1 almost 1.1 electron unit, right so this is much more than what I need right so what happens as a result of that is that I get a much reduced VOC so the band gap is higher than the optimum and uh, as a result of that you saw that when you were watching that video those cells were looking all uh, reddish right because they had absorbed all the blue light or the high energy light but they had let through all the light below their band gap right so they appear kind of transparent and since they are thin anyway they appear this kind of reddish uh, uh, in color and uh, so that clearly says that your band gap is uh, you know is, is, is uh, higher than the optimum if it was optimum you would absorb most of it and it would appear you know blackish instead of being reddish the other thing was this offset are much more than what I need so I get a reduced uh, VOC so a lot of the research in this field is going on to how to figure out to uh, to reduce to find out these different organic materials which have lower of these uh, band gap right so yeah looking at this at least it looks like that right 4.99 minus 4 point so theoretically possible it should be 0.7 no point seven. So a lot of the research which is going on in this field is to figure out essentially these new kind of materials which would give you lower band gap and it would also have less misalignment. It would have less of this uh, step height. Uh, the and you know you can dumb this problem on the chemist and say, you know go figure it out but it's not that easy because when you are you try to lower the band gap these things they you have to mix these two materials right you have material a and material b they have to mix with each other so it becomes very difficult to find these kind of organic materials which have low bind gap and can enter mix or they are soluble in each other so that's a problem if, if somebody can figure it out the efficiency overnight can exceed uh, 15 percent or at least they claim they can exceed 15 percent so if somebody figures out the right uh, molecules for that it can absorb the spectrum much better now okay so this is again I find really, really exciting so you guys you know we talked about recombination mechanisms quite a bit right we talked about that if we generate an electron and hole 
they are you know they can get recombined before they get connected right so now consider the case over here so I have this organic uh, cell I have this acceptor and donor uh, of uh, uh, acceptor uh, uh, material and donor material and I have separated this hole from this electron now is there any way this electron can recombine before it gets collected for you guys can it huh it can how many people think it can so to recombine what is the other thing it needs uh, electron to recombine needs a hole right where is the hole Right, the electrons all went this way. The hole went this way, right? The everything else is excited, right? So exciton is closely bound. You're not going to break it, right? It's those two things are bound to each other. So if you have separated these electron and holes, essentially there's there's you know there's there's no hole available for them to recombine or for this electron to recombine or even for that hole. There is no electron available inside the donor material with it, with it can recombine, right? So all the things that we discussed about the problems with uh, uh, with electron and hole recombination, they now just uh, go away. The only place this recombination can occur is that it occurs right at the interface. So this interface between the electron between your acceptor and donor material, if there are traps over there, then of course uh, it can get recombined. But once it's separated, then there's nothing else. You know, there you can think of this as a highway, or you know, this is a road for electrons. This is a road for holes, and you know, there's a barrier between them. So there's traffic flowing this way, there's traffic flowing this way. As, as long as there's a barrier, there's no way you know there can there can be a crash, right? So um, so once these excitons are are uh, are dissociated then they don't uh, recombine. There's a probability that recombination can happen uh, at the interface. Now, one of the things, if you want to just make a solar, the organic uh, solar cell, and you think of, you know, I'll put my donor material, and then below it, I'll put my uh, acceptor material. So then you'll realize that the efficiency that you can uh, obtain for this material is going to be very low. And the reason is that you'll generate these excitons, right? So you'll generate these electron and hole pair. But these are charged neutral species. So if you apply electric field, they don't respond to it, right? They don't flow one way or the other. So how do you separate them, right? So only these excitons, which are very close to this interface, or you know, with, which are in the distance of one diffusion length away from the interface, so they can diffuse to that interface. They will diffuse to the interface and get dissociated. And once they get dissociated, they'll get uh, collected out uh, you know, at the at one at the electron contact and one at the hole contact. But only those excitons which which are you know in the vicinity of two diffusion length away from this interface, only those will essentially get dissociated, right? All the other will just get recombined before they are dissociated. So you can absorb these. Uh, absorb these uh, photons and convert them into electron and hole pair with a or convert them into these excitons with a very high efficiency once you dissociate them you can collect them with 100% efficiency right and there's you know there's no loss mechanism typically which occurs after you dissociated them but the main thing is to essentially getting them in this region which is very close to the interface so if i design a cell like this which is these planar cells with one one uh, layer of material placed on top of the other, the efficiency would be really shabby because I'm placing a lot of this material, but only the material which is right at the interface is contributing to this uh, solar conversion process. So, so okay, so here is a neat idea, right? So why do I need to design it like this? I, I can design my cell so that it has this checkerboard kind of a design. So I have this one uh, material. This is my donor material. So this acts as, uh, let's say, a uh, highway for holes, right? So this is my whole highway. And then I have this acceptor material, which is my electron highway. And what I'll do is I'll essentially you know, place them like, I'll make small stripes of them so that they're 
there's a lot of these uh, interfaces between them and now the excitants when they come to any one of these uh, interface they get separated into these uh, electron and hole highways and they can then con get collected at the appropriate contact right so this is uh, something which is uh, uh, you know it's pursued it's very good to uh, pursue this uh, in a in a university environment so this is a paper from uh, professor mike McGee, who's in the material science over here so what he has done is essentially he has made this uh, this nano pillars okay so he has made the multiple of these nano pillars and then he has deposited this material a and then on top of it he has deposited this material b right so it forms these checkerboard fashion it forms this checkerboard pattern and now you can uh, collect these, uh, you know, separately at, uh, or you can dissociate a large fraction of your excitons because it's very easy for them to find. Uh, uh, it's very easy to for them to find this interface, and as soon as they find this interface, they get separated, and they get uh, they get boarded on each of their separate lanes, and then they collect uh, get collected. So. This way to do it, right, is of course uh, it looks good uh, in that publication. It good, looks good in the lab, but if you would actually try to implement the cell, it would be very expensive because you have to print these, uh, uh, make these uh, nano pillars, then deposit these two materials. And remember, we are talking about organic cells, which are supposed to be cheap. I should be able to, you know, mix two things, place them in an oven, and make my cell. I don't want to do lithography or print these nano pillars and so on. So the way this is done is instead of uh, instead of having that checkerboard, the pattern, what is most commonly done is that you take these two materials and just mix them and put them in an oven and essentially mix them really nicely so you know they 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 mix very well and then you put them in an oven and hopefully they come out something like this. So you have paths to these materials to the contact. So let's say I want to collect my electron which are in that red material over here. So hopefully all of them are connecting to this in some way and uh, uh, those which are eye landing you know which are not connecting to a contact those would be a complete waste because I can't be I won't be able to extract those uh, carriers but those which are making contact essentially I can whatever is generated over here will get collected eventually on this contact right so this is how it's uh, actually done so you take these two materials mix them and heat it in an oven and form this what's called a bulk heterojunction. And again, the idea behind both of these approaches is that you are trying to maximize that interface area. Right? So in both these cases, what you're trying to maximize for is the interface area. And you'd be surprised that even in that very thin piece of plastic, by mixing these materials uh, you know, very well, you can, you can generate a very large interface area. So actually, dissociating of these uh, Excitant is no longer a concern. In fact, you can dissociate almost all of them because you have, once you make this kind of a structure, you have such a large surface, interface area that eventually they'll find our interface before they recombine and they'll get uh, dissociated. Right? Again, very interesting physics. Right? Really, completely different physics, but nonetheless very interesting. So what people do is they essentially mix these two materials and they place them in an oven and when you mix them the grain size is small but when you heat them they are essentially you know they are it's like birds of the same feather flock together so they same kind of materials try to they try to you know uh, self organize and get self uh, aggregated so they'll mix and the the grains uh, of you know are the or these meshes of these materials they'll grow in grain size uh, as a function of the unease time so the more time you put it in the oven the larger is the you know, it will get separated out, and if you essentially keep on uh, heating it further, it would again start to form islands, which is not good. So the yeah, just give me one. So the efficiency of these cells, if you start annealing them, it uh, essentially when you start, it's zero because uh, uh, these materials are so intermixed that the interface is not well defined but uh, then it reaches a maximum value and if you anneal it further you start forming these islands of these materials and these islands are not interconnected to anything so these are again not good things for uh, collecting your tiles because whatever is islanded is not collected at the contact so when uh, uh, we 
we'll come back next time i'll cover the last topic i didn't cover about uh, dye sensitized cells so that's one thing i'll cover the talk on wednesday should be really interesting it's uh, from uh, this guy howard lee he's a veteran of the solar industry he has been in it for uh, more than 20 30 years so he has always worked on this technology six so he'll have a very deep perspective on it and he'll talk about all the different approaches and so i encourage you to you know attend that and uh, so see you on uh, wednesday and if you guys have questions on the project do stay back i'm going